Guys, recently iPhone 14 has been the talk of the world. So, what made Apple to be superior in the market all these years? Yes, Vaishnavi. Recently, Apple became the first one trillion company. Apart from being the big tech organization, it's best among its counterparts. From building a motherboard without a monitor and keyboard, Apple One, to the newest iPhone 14, Apple has left every tech biggie behind. Apple's primarily being a product-based company focused on their iPhone instead of trying their hands everywhere and see where it is bought them. Their one smartphone's progress is so high that the other phone makers cannot even move the needle. We have to dig deep into Apple's success story to know how it all happened. Apple and technology are like a sides of a coin. The way they are bringing the amazing new technologies in these small sized uh, ha handsets is just incomparable. Its current dominance and ride is quite puzzling for its competitors uh, and even for us. Both past and the recent success of Apple are based on growth of its products. Other than their trademark iPhone, Apple has even other successful products. For instance, its iPad bought the tablets into the market. iPad boasted 46% of US market share and grabbed $5.9 revenue. It's by far the most successful tablet in the world. Apple's journey has been a bit extraordinary from the beginning. Who would have, who would have thought that, uh, that a 21-year-old college dropout would have this enormous vision? started with Job hanging out in a garage with his two friends Steve Wozink and Ronald Wayne. Jobs and Wayne started working for a gaming company while Wozink worked for the Hewlett Packard. But on April 1st, 1976, this trio built the first Apple computer and it was the first uh, fruit of this remarkable journey. But its Apple shares for the just $800 just three months after initiation of Apple. But this where the two Steves went on their own mission. On summer of 1997, when Apple was nearly bankrupt, everyone is aware that Apple had a great fourth quarter and has become the first $1 trillion company. But the way to success hasn't been an easy one for the iPhone, iPhone maker. The iPhones are doing better than ever today. But very few of us know that Apple was once on the brink of bankruptcy. That's right. It happened 20 years ago in 1997. Apple was going through a disastrous phase at the time as it was on the verge of getting defeated. Apple decided to buy a computer company next with the hope of high decision to their company. But Steve Jobs considered it on a board rather than getting the help of an established organization that buy a company. Steve Jobs knew that if Apple was safe, only in the chance of being seeking help of to the com competitors. Microsoft realized that eliminating competitors wasn't the only way to win. It was to forward and rescue Apple. It invested $150 billion to Microsoft and Apple it would support Mac for 5 years. This was the contract. And if a favor of Apple dropped to the age Microsoft to claim the Microsoft has copied Mac OS and it made the computer insane to a choice. After the agreement, Jobs even thanked Bill Gates for their support, which was even reported in the Times magazine on that year. When Apple was worth $1 trillion on various tech, which has like Amazon, Microsoft, and we doing the great job in the tech world. On August 2nd, 2018, Apple hit the market value with $1 trillion in which Apple X played a major role. iPhone sales increased in such a way that went to a growth of 1%. Revenue instantly jumped by 20% that year. Within $53.3 billion in revenue, the company managed to grow by the 17% of year. Other Apple services may not be showing same marginal growth, but iPhone is killing from one side to another what Apple requires. When we talk about the market capitalization, Apple has been the biggest company in the world for these years. Now that they will make fruitful use of the success. Apple's magic numbers is a boon for investment. The company's bright fortune is surely a good news for the individual investors. 
the stock of apple is widely worn by the teachers to electricians to lawyers by rising to 1 trillion dollar it has given a reflection of how big is the investor scope with apple apple is now at a position where it is growing and is profitable for investors of all sort be it the newbie or the established ones Kate Warney, the investment strategist at the Edward John says, Apple's $1 trillion valuation is a great reminder to investors that company, every area that Apple is targeting and investing money has got competitors lurking around. Whether it is for the chatbots and AI to the cars and world, hungry co-opted companies are following it like a shadow. Apple surpassed the $1 trillion mark and left us all amazed. But can they maintain their edge in the tech market? Can Apple also provide the amazing technological advancements as it has done in the past? Yes, because if we look behind, there are other competitors in the race. Sustaining such big numbers won't be easy when they have other competitor weekies who themselves carry the potential to overpower it. Imagine today's world without the technologies like iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Apple's success story is full of efforts, sacrifices, so it won't let anyone empower so easily. Its competitive edge makes it strong players in the market. We have to have a look into all the competitive. Uh, we have to have a look into all the and then the four building blocks. Are we have to have a look into the building blocks of competitive advantage that Apple has earned. Who brought the sauce? I brought the sauce. Who made the sauce? I made the sauce. What's in the sauce? I am the sauce. Who brought the sauce? Okay. Don't tell me you've tasted anything like this. Don't tell me you felt this fire on your lips. I got the recipe. Hit it by the piece. My love. Hey, hey, hey. Who brought the sauce? I brought the sauce. Who made the sauce? I got the sauce. What's in the sauce? I, I, I am the sauce. One of the keys to Apple is Apple's an incredibly collaborative company. And so, you know how many committees we have at Apple? No. Zero. We have no committees. No committees. We are, a ver we are organized like a startup. One person's in charge of iPhone OS software. One person's in charge of Mac hardware. One person's in charge of iPhone hardware engineering. Another person's in charge of worldwide marketing. Another person's in charge of operations. It's, we're organized like a startup. We're the biggest startup on the planet. And we all meet for three hours once a week, and we talk about everything we're doing, the whole business. And there's tremendous teamwork at the top of the company which filters down to tremendous teamwork throughout the company. And teamwork is dependent on trusting the other folks to come through with their part without watching them all the time, but trusting that they're going to come through with their parts. And that's what we do really well. And we're great at figuring out how to divide things up into these great teams that we have and all work on the same thing, touch bases frequently, and bring it all together into a product. We do that really well. And so what I do all day is meet with teams of people and work on ideas and solve problems to make new products, to make new marketing programs, whatever it is. And are people willing to tell you you're wrong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, other than snarky journalists. I mean, people that oh, work Oh, yeah. For no, we have wonderful arguments. And do you win them all? Or? Oh, no, I wish I did. <laughs> oh, see, you can't. <laughs> if you want to hire great people and have them stay working for you, you have to let them make a lot of decisions, and you have to, you have to be run by ideas, not hierarchy. The best ideas have to win. So, Otherwise, good people don't stay. But you must be more than a facilitator who runs meetings. You obviously contribute your own ideas. I contribute ideas, sure. Well, I, why would I be there if I didn't? <laughs> Let me talk about Apple's superiority in innovation. Apple's innovation strategy is one of the reasons behind its unparalleled success. It gives the company a competitive edge over its competitors 
and makes it more sought after a brand by customers today. Apple's market cap of more than 2 trillion valuation and billions of revenues manifests the power of its world's most innovative company. The company has the most loyal customers base of people of every demographic. Everything that Apple does becomes an instant phenomenon, a trendsetter. From iconic to iPads to iPhones to iWatch, all have set new trends in the technology industry. Apple creates a wholesome experience for its customers. It provides customers with innovative software wrapped in more innovative hardware which comes in beautiful packaging. Apple provides really good ideas wrapped up in another really good ideas. Apple's innovation strategy that has been steering the company to its matchless success. The need for innovation runs in the culture of Apple which was inherited from its founder, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, committed to radical innovation, navigated the company to success amidst the intense competition. Apple has set trends with its innovation and attention to detail. With computers became sleek and user-friendly. Similarly, with iPod and iTunes, Apple taught people the right way to listen to music. Likewise, iPhone gave, gave customers everything they never knew they wanted. Apple has not stopped there with, with its hardware and software. Similarly, with iPod and iTunes, Apple taught people the right way to listen to music. Likewise, iPhone gave, gave customers everything they never knew they wanted. Apple has not stopped there with, with its hardware and software. It continues to reach a whole range of innovative ecosystem to enhance the overall user experience. Apple is organized in such a way that fosters a culture of innovation. The organizational design and leadership model plays a vital role in Apple's innovation strategy. When Steve Jobs returned to Apple in 1977, he changed the conventional organizational structure to a collaborative functional structure. Steve Jobs laid off all general managers of every business unit and divided the company into various teams. Each domain was led by an expert leader and it is responsible for the decision taken by the team. This organizational structure now is the cornerstone for Apple's innovation strategy. According to Steve Jobs, ideas run the company, not the hierarchy. To put Apple's innovation strategy in better words, the technical experts bring more to the table than a manager with no technical expertise. Here's, let's take an example of the decision to introduce the dual lens camera with portrait mode in iPhone 7 Plus by Paul Huber and his team. In such a decision was a risky decision as before iPhone 7 Plus, the camera was not the defining feature of any phone. So the idea, the customers would be ready to pay an extra amount for the better quality camera on a phone might not have been a sound decision to take at that time. A manager who does not possess technical expertise would deny, deny the idea simply on its viability and profitability. Hubel and its team still took the decision. Now the cameras are one of the defining features of an iPhone. It hires and empowers smart people to harness creativity and innovation. Steve Jobs had a true knack to find the best of minds. For innovation, the company needs innovative minds who are always coming up with the ideas and designs that give the company its competitive edge. It is a part of Apple's innovation strategy to empower each worker to keep them motivated to think beyond. As in the words of Steve Jobs, it doesn't make sense to hire smart people and tell them what to do. We hire smart people so they can tell us what to do. The company spends aggressively on R&D to create innovative products. The company believes through its commitment to R&D, it can only better serve its customers. The investment in R&D constitutes the major portion of Apple's innovation strategy and the company believes it will enable the company in the long run. To offer new innovative products to its customers, 
Currently, the company has all its attention to wearables, health and its secret self-driving car project. Apple takes the time and never launches a half-baked product. Apple has been the trendsetter company for more than 40 years. Now, we all know that Apple has been the pioneer of many unheard for products and features, which Google and Samsung even follow. For example, nobody even heard of Face ID in smartphones, not until Apple did it. Similarly, the portrait lightning features in iPhone X shook the entire market because of its novelty. The feature allowed every user to get their images with a professional photography lighting effects. Since Apple is fully committed to innovation and does not want to dump less than perfect products in the market. Whatever Apple does, it does it right. The company deliberately keeps its products portfolio limited and focus on making them head turners mainly. This is also an interesting part of Apple's innovation strategy. Does anyone know how Apple has become superior in efficiency in all these years? Apple brings out the superior efficiency out of all brands in the world. Yes, we all know Apple is famous for its innovation and design. But few people know that the way Apple handles the inventory is also the factor that led to success. As a matter of fact, Apple's supply chain has led Gartner's supply chain at the top 25 list since 2013. Let's have a look on how the world's best efficiency has come to process. Apple company reached $260.17 billion revenues in 2019 before Tim Cook joined as company chief operations officer. He had joined Apple in 1998 at the same time Steve Jobs re entered the company. And he transformed Steve Apple's messy operations into a success, becoming COO in the 2005 and CEO in 2009. Tim Cook believes that when it comes to the technology such as smartphones, tablets and laptops, inventory depreciates very very quickly, losing 1-2% to two percentage of its value each week. So, even he addresses it as inventory is a fundamental evil. Back in 2011, a comparison of how tech companies manage their inventory shows Apple was performing much better than Dell, HP, Blackberry and more. Using the inventory turnover formula that shows how many times a company's inventory can be sold and replaced over a specific period of time. In 2011, Apple performed 2 times better than Dell, 5 times better than HP, 4.5 times better than Blackberry, and 5.5 times better than Motorola. Apple's annual inventory peaked in 2017 with a value of $4.8 billion. In 2018, the company saw a 18.52 percentage decline year over year, but they bounced back to each year. And they had $3.8 billion in inventory in 2019. Yes, 3.7 percentage increase in 2018. In a nutshell, Apple purchases components and materials from various suppliers that gets them shipped to an assembling plant in China. From there, products are shipped directly to the consumers via UPS or FedEx who bought from the Apple online store. For other distribution channels such as retail stores and other distributors, Apple keeps products at El Grove and California where Central Warehouse and Call Center are located. And it ships the products from there. At the end of the product's life, customer can send products back to the nearest Apple stores or dedicated recycling facilities. Looking back at the past five years, Apple's inventory turnover hit its lowest point in September 2018. That is 32.7x. That means Apple turn their inventory every 10 days. Keeping as little inventory on hand as possible is very important. Why? Because of cost with warehouse and competitors possible hits. Technology manufacturers can't afford to keep too many products in stock because of a sudden announcement from a competitor or a new image. That could change everything and suddenly bring out the value of the products in inventory. By 2013, Apple was dealing with 154 key suppliers, way lower than Amazon, for example, which facilitates better supply relations itself, and kept only one central warehouse in perfect data sync with approximately 250 owned stores. Forcing the sales level accurately and not having excess inventory is absolutely crucial in computer industry. 
especially when a new products will be cannibalized the oil. Not having too many SKU helps correct forecasting. In 2013, Apple had 26,000 SKUs way less than other technology manufacturers. Another facilitating factor is having a longer product life cycle. And Apple has more than 12 months for its key products. And forecasting demand doesn't come only in the form of what products your consumers will buy, but also on what kind of technologies will be in demand for the next upcoming years. That allowing the company to reduce cost with suppliers by replacing orders for longer term. This also led to creating enough demand for suppliers so that other competitors cannot order the components and hence limiting the imitations. Although Apple was always pushing to have fast inventory turnover, it made a change in 2011 for not rushing selling. The change was implemented with the launch of iPad 2 and consisted of selling the much awaited products the second day after they were delivered to the shops despite the customer's queue in front. This measure was taken to make sure inventory tracking runs smooth and there are no errors that led to the inventory inaccuracies. This made Apple very superior in efficiency and that become number one in the world. Apple's customer responsiveness is all about being fast and right. The value of being right is obvious. Customers get something that meets their need. But the value depends upon the critical on the speed on which their responsiveness is produced. Customer responsiveness helps a company to develop new products in modifying the current ones based on changing the needs of the customers. Customers have left information that provide feedback all the time by the way of producing reviews. Customers leave information and provide feedback at the time by the way of product reviews, comments about the company experience with the brand, and other such as data. How do they do that? Hmm. Customer friendly environment, incentive trainings of employees, and of course, a great product. A key element of their success is the culture that they have to create and they kept the reinforcement that helped their delivery consultant great customer experience. For example, employees are told to not to sell but rather to help customers to solve their problems. Their job is to understand all of your customers' needs, some of which they may not even realize that they have one training manual says. Incentively, employees receive no sales commission and have no sales targets. Apparently, Apple gives the people clear guidance on what they do and how they do when it comes to dealing with customers. For example, the steps of service. Approach customers with their personalized warm welcome. Politely to understand all their customers' needs. Present a solution for their customers not to take home to build. Listen often so resolve an issue and concern end with the found farewell and an investment that in return. My take from this is that is clearly Apple is an example of a business that create and reinforce the Uber culture. That means understanding that expert of them of be behaving accordingly and consistently as a result system and the process are built to create consistently great customer and experience and reinforcing the culture. People are engaged, employed and encouraged to deliver them. People are rewarded and recognized for doing it. So how do Apple increase their staff? In the word repeated over and over again by the training manual and it happens to be empathy. The manual clarifies that they don't mean sympathy which is the ability to feel sorry for someone by encouraging na demands their staffs put themselves in a customer's shoes that to empathic, empathetically towards them. So anytime a customer comes in angry, people of being screen sharing, disappointed and gadgets are too expensive or fe featured with the OS upgrade and having lost their phones, photos in Apple. Though the employees of the three Fs which are feed, felt and found. Apple customer satisfies and loyally have been growing steadily over a year, reflecting the way of customers and view of brand. According to NSP, the scoring to 2022 is a result of 72 which is significantly the average of NSP score. 
Apple continually focuses on improving net promotion score has produced a significant result of the company. In 2017, the NSP was responsible of 58 as it, in 2016 through 2017. The NSP was 72, which is the highest of technology industries, following decreases to 2018 in 16. Thank you. Superior in quality is one big reason for Apple's success and its complete control of both hardware and software development. This makes it easier for both brands to develop high quality products that work seamlessly with each other. Building an effective ecosystem that their enthusiasts are drawn to, drawn to, unlike PCs that are produced by several manufacturers, and the company focuses on single end goal of improving the user experience. Apple is known for its excellent line of high quality capable products built to perform different functions and filled with features that make life easier. For example, Find My device allows you to find your lost device with a few tap. AirDrop lets you to transfer different kinds of files to other users of or your other Apple gadget with ease. The biggest reason customers are devoted to the brand is because their products are built in rich ecosystem. Each Apple gadget and accessory plays a specific role in the ecosystem and complements other Apple devices to ensure task continuity and uniformity. Apple success is not a coincidence. Time and again they have proven that the company is all about creativity and passion instead of prestige. There are five components that make Apple's line of quality products. First one is control of software and hardware. As previously mentioned, Apple's control over its hardware and software give them a tremendous edge over competitors. For Apple, it is easier for them to work towards a single goal. They are able to introduce new updates, develop accessories that can boost previous models capabilities and improve user workflow and overall experience. Not to mention their devices are incredibly easy to use and integrate. Second one is mm. Apple represents the future of technology. The product that they have introduced and developed to become a catalyst that drove the world towards technological advancement. Third is it's safe and secure. Macs are generally a safe and secure option. They keep malware and hackers at bay through high-performing antivirus software and utilize various practices such as end-to-end -end encryption. This makes it harder for unwanted personnel to infiltrate your device and steal your precious information. Last one is great design. Apple product boasts of a perfect balance of function and design. The minimalist elements of the products in the interface not only not only increase the operating system appeal but also provide users with a seamless browsing experience. So these components with, will help Apple to be to be in superior in quality. This will in turn create a value to the brand and generate high profit. So superior in quality as is a very important building block of competitive advantage for Apple. Apple Care support. This is Lindsay. How may I help you? Hi, my name is Ashley. I'm having some trouble with my MacBook. Well, with Apple Care, you're in good hands. Ma'am, have you tried turning the laptop off and on? Yeah, at least five times. It still doesn't work. I'm sorry to hear that. And have you tried shaking it? Similar to how you would shake a baby. Yeah, that too. All right. Have you tried killing your entire family? Yep. Okay, well, it looks like your only option today is going to be to go into the nearest store and wait for three hours because there's no organized line system, so everybody with an iPad has a mob surrounding them. Mm-hmm. Or you could buy a new laptop, but that's going to cost you about $20,000 because let's see, it looks like your warranty expired one minute ago. All right, well, thanks for your help. I think I'm just going to smash my laptop with a baseball bat if that's okay. Sounds good. Well, you have a great day, ma'am. Bye-bye. You too, thanks. Superior in quality, superior in customer responsiveness, and superior in innovation. Thank you.